Hi, welcome to the wood workshop of Wood Spun Round. I um, wanted to share as we get started with this uh, new video, wanted to share some stickers that have come in just recently. Uh, a couple of, of folks who uh, I've been watching for quite a while. Hope you'll give them a, sh a try as well. Go watch a few of their videos and see if maybe there's somebody that you need to be subscribed to as well. First one is Jordan over at, um, uh huh, Jordan Woodworks. Jordan Woodworks. It's Bruce Jordan over Jordan Woodworks. Uh, great channel, doing some great work. Um, I, I really like some of his uh, inventiveness. He will find some things. Uh, he'll take a piece of wood that a lot of people won't use, and he'll make something great out of it. A lot of times he'll use resin to do that, uh, which is fine. Sometimes it's straight wood, and uh, I tell you what, he does a great job. Go over and watch Bruce there at Jordan Woodworks. Another one. Uh, this is a fellow across the pond, uh, Rich, the beard, times 16. Uh, Rich does a great job. He is a, a renaissance kind of guy. Uh, he does uh, wood turning, but he also does other woodwork as well. Uh, some very inventive painting. He does some metal work. He does some welding. Uh, go over and watch Rich. He is just a, a wealth of information. I enjoy him. Uh, no matter what he's doing, it's it's usually a blast to watch him. I learn something uh, virtually every time. The other one is one uh, uh, who lives close to me down in Bowling Green, Kentucky. This is Bart at uh, Craft Shed Designs. Bart um, does not have a YouTube channel, but he does have Instagram. Go over and watch or follow him on Instagram, and uh, I'm sure you know if you give him a like. Uh, even follow him, I'm sure you'll see some good work that, that you really enjoy watching. So just some stickers right. that I wanted what to share. What you're seeing on the lathe is a piece of mimosa. Uh, this is a uh, southern United States wood. Excuse me, blowing the dust off of my dust or my face shield. Anyway, mimosa is grown in the United States primarily in the south. Um, yeah, I, if I'm not mistaken, this is an Asian native, um, but we do see quite a bit of it here in the south. When it blooms out in the spring, you know a mimosa tree from a mile away because it has these very light, wispy, uh, very pink blooms. And so uh, you'll know the mimosa trees when they are in bloom. This piece um, has an interesting story. It was cut down by a tree service. Uh, this tree had uh, gotten to be where it needed to be taken down for whatever reason. Uh, and and uh, so it was taken down by this tree service. What just happens to be that the fellow that took it down was married to my uh, wood supplier there in Georgia. She in turn uh, took this tree cut it up and then sold wood blanks there is a well-known turner and I'll probably uh, slide his name in here uh, at some point um, not intentionally but I'll ac accidentally tell you that it's Mark Soleil loves mimosa and <laughs> uh, so Mark had bought it and then uh, a rough turn this he's got a pretty nice bowl shape here I really like it you see a nice OG on the bottom side uh, the top side it has a curved rim, and then it drops in. This bowl is really thick. The uh, the uh, tenon is a little too large for me. One reason I wanted to go ahead and have it this way and set up, uh, I'm going to cut this tenon down. I'm going to make sure we are in shape, uh, round. I'm going to try not to change the shape that Mark already has on here. Uh, but first thing I'm going to do is get this tenon down to a size that I can use. Um, this tenon here is, is whatever that is, four inches or something, and, and my tenons need to be closer to my, my live center, uh, the bearings of my live center. So I'm gonna cut that down. We're gonna trim this up and uh, uh, get it into shape. We're gonna get it finished. And then this is going to, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> Elizabeth. It's going not back to Elizabeth, who is my, my wood dealer, but to her sister. This is going to be uh, for, for her sister, Elizabeth's sister. So, um, I made a deal. Uh, you'll probably see another piece of mimosa. It's a little bit smaller than this one. Um, same tree, 
same bunch of wood uh, but anyway that was that was my fee for turning this so uh, th you know how glorious is that that this wood has made uh, come full circle now uh, going from tree tree to blank to rough turn now it's gonna be finished turned and sent to uh, the sister of the person of the lady who originally cut it into a blank for a bowl. Uh, so anyway, let's get started. I've already uh, uh, had this on the lathe. I've got it straight. Uh, it, it's not not exactly wobble free. It's going to wobble a little bit, but I've got it turned up to a thousand RPMs. Got my face shield on. Let's get to turning. That noise is just simply, I've got a block on the inside and uh, the wood is wanting to rub against that. There we go. Right, just using my skew there to uh, straighten up my that tenon just a little bit on the inside making sure it's shaped correctly all right stop the lathe and we'll turn the tool rest just a little bit we want to make sure we're good and we're shaped up correctly on the outside of this bowl like I said I think Mark had a great <clears throat> excuse me a great shape here a little bit of an OG will will actually uh, accentuate that well I want to clean I want to clean up this bottom just take one good pass across here make me myself a nice foot and we'll keep it about the size that he had I am going to accentuate this little this beginning curve right here and then make it uh, come all the way out, just real nice and smooth. Uh, may take a few passes, but I gotta, I wanna straighten up this foot so that we don't have any riding on it, but also so it's good and flat. that I've got it nice and clean 
<coughs> Get my ruler just to double check myself. Gotta go down just a little more on that toward that inside. I don't want to go all the way to my tenon because I want to have uh, a place for that for my. Oh yeah, I've got space. I want it riding on this outside edge, not not anything in the center. And I've got that. Okay, uh, and I started to say I don't want to go all the way to the tendon because I want to I, I want a surface here for my chuck to rest against the jaws to rest against that. Okay, now we're ready to do this outside. We have uh, sanded to 320 grit, um, which is my norm. That's If you want to see all of that, you can go over <clears throat> to my video. Uh, smoothing out the rough spots, I believe is the name of it. What I am applying here is some sanding sealer, some diluted sanding sealer. This is uh, the Def brand. Uh, sanding sealer, lacquer sanding sealer that I have mixed 50-50 with lacquer thinner. The reasoning behind the lacquer thinner twofold. One, it will raise the grain slightly and so uh, my 320 is about to be amplified anyway but this just helps it to do that. Uh, <clears throat> another good reason seals the wood so regardless of what finish I put on here um, I won't won't need quite as much because the wood will already be sealed uh, did, even if I sand this this will soak in because it's diluted it will soak in rather well uh, rather deeply that's interesting as I'm rubbing that in I can feel the the grain across there, uh, the winter or summer grain, <clears throat> kind of like the Japanese cedar that I do. Um, leaves a, a high and a low that I really like, and apparently my, my wife loves it. She loves the texture, uh, gives that, leaves that sensual feel to it. I'm just kind of working that in to the, to the grain and to the wood. So, um, this will slightly raise the grain. It will seal the wood. It also gives me a preview of what's to come. Uh, we went from that light brown, which wasn't bad, to this, uh, uh, this, this variegated brown that is just, that's beautiful. Um, the more I think about it, the more I am sure I have not turned mimosa before. Let me let that run for just a minute, just to, to uh, dry off that air circulating as that wood is turning. 
is helping that to dry. And I need to make a decision here while I'm think while it's drying. I need to think about this just a minute. What kind of finish? Hey, it was not. Uh, there was no finish specifically asked for uh, on this piece. It is a awfully nice shape that Mr. Mark Soleil started on this piece. I started to tell you earlier, Mark is uh, Mark has been around a long time. He is extremely experienced. Now that looks like it's jumping up and down terribly. That edge, the very edge, I guess, is a little bit. Not bad, but it is a little bit. Anyway, uh, uh, Mark is, is uh, getting up in age. He's about to retire. He's not turning quite as much as he was. And, and what he is turning is much smaller than this. More like uh, little weed pots and the like. So uh, um, he is starting to move out some of these blanks that he has rough turned. And he's got a lot of them. He's stacked them up for years. And most of those guys who who turn twice as a habit um, have that situation. They've got a lot of blanks stacked up. And it's still, even though I've put sanding sealer on alcohol and sanding sealer, both of those raise the grain slightly. Um, this still feels awfully good in the hand. tell you what I'm going to do. Tell you what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to go with a two, three, four coats of, of uh, OB Shine Juice. Uh, OB Shine Juice is a combination. Uh, you can't go out and buy OB Shine Juice. What you can do is buy a can of shellac, a can of boiled linseed oil, and a can of denatured alcohol. Those three mixed in roughly equal parts gives you OB Shine Juice. OB Shine Juice is intended as a uh, not a final finish as such. A lot of people use it as a final finish. Um, I have used it as a final finish on pins where I could build up uh, 15, 20 coats. Uh, and it will build up. It has enough shellac in it. Um, even though it's only a third shellac, and it's been cut uh, pretty significantly. I'm not sure what pound cut that the pre-made shellac is, is sold in. Somebody might be able to tell me. Tell me in the comments if you know. Uh, bullseye, just regular bullseye shellac. Uh, nothing special. Uh, tell me what cut that is if you happen to know. I just don't. So anyway, um, it's got this shellac in it um, that dries really quickly. It's a good shellac. It's an old, I mean, excuse me, it's a good finish. It's an old finish. Uh, been around for a long time. Again, I'm going to turn that on just to, for the air circulation, uh, just to help it dry just a little bit. It's at, still at 500 for where I was uh, sanding, and uh, so I'm not slinging it off at all. I like that first coat to dry just a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do, a little bit more on my paper towel. I'm gonna start applying some more, but I'm gonna speed it up. Go back up to about a thousand. There we go. Again, I'm still not slinging it off. I'm not applying so much. But I wanna burnish that. Um, I started to tell you, the shellac is the finish. The oil 
is a carrier. It helps carry the shellac so it can spread. Um, if you didn't, if you were just using, if you were trying to do this with, with straight shellac, it would probably um, streak on you because it just, it dries so quickly. And then the alcohol that you use, the alcohol will thin both the, the boiled linseed oil and the shellac. And so uh, the three together, I, the alcohol, <laughs> it's an interesting thing. By thinning the shellac, you actually cause the shellac to dry faster. The boiled linseed oil has dryers in it. That's, uh, they don't literally boil the linseed oil, but they add, uh, add dryers into it, um, which when you add alcohol to that, when you thin it with the alcohol, it causes it to dry even faster. And then when you are, are burnishing that in, you're, I'm applying a, a bit of pressure as I rub back and forth, heating all of that up. And what that does is causes that chemical reaction in both the boiled linseed oil and the shellac it causes it to dry even faster. So this is a fairly quick, it doesn't cure that quickly, but it does dry that quickly. I hope you can see I'm, it's beginning to build a, a little bit of a shine. And I'm only putting like three or four drops on there every time I go back and add some more to my paper towel. Uh, so that's getting spread very, very thinly. Um, and I won't know how even it is until I actually stop and, and look. But what I'm seeing is a, a shine that is pretty, um, pretty consistent all the way across. There's one little spot right about here where it's not quite as even as some of the rest that I'm seeing in the reflection. That could be the angle, but it could also be that I've not got enough in there yet. Again, adding some pressure. I'm taking it just down to the bottom edge. Um, was gonna, as I started sanding, I started worrying about, you know, making sure I had the bottom sanded, and it is sanded relatively smoothly. Uh, but then I forgot, I've got to turn this thing back around after I turn it, I'm gonna turn it around, do the inside. I've got to turn it back around and remove that tenon. And when I do, I will uh, define my foot a little more uh, on the bottom itself and sand it and all of that, finish it. I'm not even finishing right now. I wanna leave that edge. That's where I, that will help me to finish the bottom so it doesn't look like I repaired it. Um, all right, let's turn it off just to see. I think I want to put a little bit more on there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I hope you're seeing this in, let me, left the light off. There we go. Hopefully that helps you to see that. That's uh, got some beautiful shine. I'm seeing some chatoyants here in the, woohoo. There's my end grain right there. And it pops right there, bam. Yes, it's a little bit lighter in the end grain, but it, it the shine flashes at you. I hope you're seeing that. That side, that side. That is some pretty wood. I really like that. Okay, let's put let's put just a little bit more of this OB shine juice on. Then we're going to use the axe abrasive, followed by the axe restoring and polishing paste. So I've got right down to the foot, I've got right up to the lip. The foot and the bottom will be finished off after we turn it around the second time. The rim and all the inside will be finished after we turn it around this first time and, and turn the inside. 
Remember, this inside has only been rough turned. It's not been final turned. Got everything in the wrong hand here. Ooh, I got some heat there. Forgot who it was said it. Uh, somebody said uh, the question was asked, "How much heat do you need to create? When do you know you've applied enough pressure and gotten enough heat to make this OB Shine Juice work?" And somebody jokingly said, "When you all, when you're about to have to pull your hand back because it's gotten too hot, you've just then gotten to enough heat." I'm feeling the heat through the paper towel. It's not burning me. It's not. I'm not about to jerk my hand back. But I'm pushing just hard enough as I move across the surface of the bowl that I can feel the heat all the way over from end to end. And I have applied about all the OB Shine juice I'm going to apply. I'm simply burnishing it in not only drying it, but curing it by the heat that I'm producing. <clears throat> beep beep. All right. Nice, pretty even shine to that. If I really wanted to buff that up high gloss, uh, I'd probably sit here another 30 minutes to 45 minutes maybe, just applying more and more of that OB Shine Juice, building that up. That is dry to the touch. I don't know how cured it is, but it is dry to the touch. I don't feel any moisture, no stickiness. There are areas um, that I can feel there's more finish on it than others. Uh, and that's okay. That's okay. I don't have to have a perfectly even finish at this point because I'm going to put a abrasive, pa uh, abrasive paste on there. I would show you the label, but my label fell off. Uh, about the first thing that happened, I, I think the first time I used it. Some of the paste got on the label and the oils and whatnot that are in here. Uh, took my label right off so no label fold that down to rectangular rectangle makes it a little easier to work with I'm going to apply this spread it out um, I did not get enough to do the whole bowl got enough to do about half is that right? Eh, maybe. Let's get a little more. I want to fully cover it much like, you know, I'll apply it much like I do wax. Um, rub it by hand, get the entire surface covered. <coughs> I don't know if it's the this mimosa or something's just gotten in my throat. I ate lunch just before I came into the shop. And maybe that's it. Whatever it is, got my nose running and my I'm coughing. All right, we are fully covered. Let me put my lid on and put it away. 
because things tend to happen with me maybe like they do with you. I'm going to slow this down to 400. Let it go away from me so I'm in reverse. Don't need the vacuum on because the paste will hold all the dust that is every all the wood dust that is uh, cut off of the bowl. I will do this until it sounds and feels like the the grit in the paste has broken down, uh, at least part way. We'll speed it up bit by bit. I'm going to keep using that same area of the paper towel that I applied it with, uh, at least for now. Eventually, I will start changing that out. I'm not pressing so hard um, that I'm going to pull my shine juice off of there, but um, sanding about like I, or pressing about like I would if I was sanding, uh, just a little bit of pressure, not very much at all. about you I find it interesting the things I discover while I'm turning I'm sitting here with my abrasive paste working it I don't hear the grit working anymore that's why I keep why I've turned it up now I'm up to 700 rpms next time I turn it up I'm gonna to go to a clean spot on my paper towel What I started to say. What I started to say was, uh, I'm sitting here rubbing this in. I just noticed my fingernails are terrible long. Now you're going to be looking at them the whole time. I wish he'd go cut his nails. Well, me too. I guess that's the, where I'm pressing with the leverage on that. Uh, no worries, because that block is on the inside. It may be making some marks, but all that inside is going to be turned away. We're up to 1,000 RPMs. I am going to uh, fold my paper towel the other direction. It's still going away from me. And that's just so I can work on top. Uh, it matters. It does not matter whether you're working on top or on bottom. If I had it in, if I had the lathe going forward, which would be, the top would be coming toward me, I'd be underneath here. But because it's going away from me on top, I can do it on, do this buffing on top and I don't worry about it. That's interesting. The inside is smoother than the rim. The rim, it's, this blank is warped a little bit. Just a little bit. Still getting some residue off of there. I'm going to turn the paper towel, open it up further first, and then I'm going to find me another clean area. Turn my speed up. There's 1200. Check something real quick. I don't know why that started to uh, rub all of a sudden, but it has. And it may be moving some more since I've cut some of the wood away. That's uh, something that can happen, is it takes some tensions out of the wood and it, the wood can move. paper towel over yet again. There's 1600 RPMs.
Yeah, I've got, uh, depends on where I'm looking, but I'm, I'm seeing uh, a good eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths of movement in that rim, in the very top edge. All right, I'm gonna get another paper towel. Come back forward. We're right now done anyway. All right, still getting just a tiny bit of residue off, but we're going to go on. I want to put the polishing, that is the Axe Polish and Restoring Paste. Maybe you can see that. Just a white, uh, it's, it's a Carnuba paste, Carnuba mixture paste. Uh, it's not just Carnuba wax. Um, okay, I'm gonna start with that ingrain there. Just a touch of mineral oil, some beeswax, and some carnauba wax. Carnauba is nice hard wax, gives a good shine. Beeswax is a very soft wax. Um, it's a lot of people use it. It's not particularly a, it's not a particular good finish because it is so soft. Uh, mineral oil cuts both of those and helps them to mix together. Uh, the beeswax will actually soak into the wood a little more than the carnauba will. Most all your car polishes are carnauba wax because it is so hard. Very resistive to uh, touching, to uh, resistive to weather water spots um, it usually has to have something mixed in it uh, for for the water spot business um, I can't tell you exactly I guess some micro crystalline let's see no nothing else there's no micro crystalline in this um, some of the other waxes have micro crystal in it I may come back on this one after um, after I'm finished completely inside and out. Everything is cured. Put some Renaissance wax on it. Still at 1600 RPMs. Going ahead and buffing this. Uh, again, very light pressure. I do not want to take the wax off, but I do want it to be buffed out find a clean spot on my paper towel here we're in great shape good shape for the shape we're in as my granddad used to say. good shape for the shape we're in What I'm going to do, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back right now with another coat of wax. Okay, just seeing where I was. There's halfway. Come back over here where I started. I'm going to go the other direction. I'm picking up some of that reservoir of wax I had. I'm going to go around it a couple of times just to make sure 
I've got the whole thing covered really well. Upper half, lower half. Put my lid on. I'm going to go ahead and change my paper towel just because that one is wet wax. It's also got dry wax on it. Still, 1600 RPMs, very light touch. I don't need a whole bunch of pressure right now. Not burnishing, we're buffing. So don't need a lot of pressure. And what I'm seeing, the reflection I'm seeing is much clearer, clearer what it was before. That's a hard word to say, isn't it? Clear earth. Turn the paper towel just so I got a clean section. And before I start on the inside, I'm gonna have to cut some more paper towels. I just this is my last cut paper towel. Looking good. Before I stop the lathe, I'm going to go ahead and turn it down to 500. Seems to be a good stopping or a good uh, starting place. All right, I turned it way further than I needed to. There we go, 500. There is the bottom side. All right. I'm going to uh, move the camera so you can see the inside of the bowl as we're going to cut that. So I'll bring you back here in just a moment. All right, face shield down. But all I'm going to do is straighten this up. I'm going to start kind of at the top and work my way down. We're getting better. Still not all the way around. I got that section right there that hadn't been touched yet. And there's a section on this side that hasn't been touched. So we've reversed the ratio. Keep going.
next time I talk to Mr. Mark Soleil, I'm gonna ask him if he remembers this, this wood doing the same thing to him. My nose is running like somebody turned the faucet on. Okay, we're all the way around on the outside. And so what I've got to do is blend it all back in uh, so I have nice continual curve all the, <coughs> all the way around. All right, dust mask back on. Even though I've got my air cleaner on and it's going, it's working. Uh, there's no floating particulate in the air. But there's enough getting in my nose. Well, very little particulate. I'm seeing it right here, right now. Okay. We're getting there. so that yeah still got that section not so bad over here but this section here still has not been touched let me see what we can do one or two more passes and then we're going to change things around and work on the inside of the bowl down low very much a shearing cut Face shield off just a little bit. There we go, much better.
I'm going to return to this rim one more last time. I think I've got the I'm going to leave this a little thicker than what I normally leave my bowls. Uh, just wanting to stay true to what, what was presented uh, because of who it was who started this bowl. But I want to make a, a nice round curve here. So I'm going to come back with a shearing cut just to uh, smooth that out. tell you one thing I'm not a big fan of uh, cleaning up every time that I turn something but I will be cleaning up when I get done with this I want this these mimosa shavings out of here all right so we are in fine shape down to that point worried about going all the way to the center just now oh, I want to start making the transition because I'm, I'm pretty heavy here I'm thin here heavy here it gets thinner right there so I need to blend that down I don't know if my calipers are large enough to tell me where I'm at at the bottom no they're not but I've still got at that point I've got three quarters which is more than I thought I had. So I can just blend right on down. I'm probably a half to three quarters there in the very bottom as well.
it down a little bit to see if that doesn't help. May not. Oh, you know what? That ain't half bad. I've got some ridges. I need to make one more smoothing pass across there. But we're there. Once again, we are at the point of uh, sanding. I, I was, it snuck up on me. Here we are. Um, the inside has now been sanded to 320. We're ready. It has been, uh, it's been blown. So there's very little dust left. What little bit of dust is there, we're gonna get some alcohol on it. However, brought you back too quick. Hey, let me invite you to join us on Wednesday nights as well <clears throat> we have a international wood turning club that meets uh, by way of zoom and I say international I mean it is international we've got uh, the United States from coast to coast we've got England we've got South America we've got Australia all represented on regular basis if not every week all of america is, is covered every single week england almost every week australia i think is there every week others pop in and out uh, because of time zones it's kind of tough for some folks and we understand that it's not good for everybody not even in the united states so let me tell you about it if you'd like to join us it's free no passwords, no special codes to get in. You go to worldwidewoodturners.org, O-R-G. There's a wealth of information on that website. We've developed it on, that way on purpose. It's open to the public. Anybody can get on there 
see anything that we've published on there, including past meetings, the chats that take place during those, those meetings. All of that is on there, as well as many articles, pictures, a huge gallery area. But then there's on that page, there's also a button that says, Go to Meeting. You click on that button, and it will take you to the Zoom site. And one of the moderators will let you in. The meeting starts at uh, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. We go until about 10 o'clock Eastern Time. You are invited to join us for any or all of it. You can come for three hours from 7 to 10. Maybe you can come at 7, but you've got something to do at 8 or 8.30. It's fine. You just check out. Just hit leave, and you leave the meeting. Maybe you can't get there till 9 o'clock. That's fine, too. Most every week we have a demonstration, and quite often, usually they are top-notch demonstrations from top-notch turners. Sometimes they're simple things, just a technique or or a uh, theory, something to show a theory, uh, like cutting downhill. There, a month or so ago, someone was asking a question about cutting downhill. I came in here and got set up and did a 10-minute demonstration on cutting downhill. What does that mean? What's it look like to cut downhill? So you're invited. Come and join us, worldwidewoodturners.org. Go down the page, hit the, the button that says go to meeting. We start, it's from 7 to 10 Eastern. Sometimes we start a little early, that's okay. We always end right at 10 though, for several reasons. The meeting is hosted by Captain Eddie. We have others who participate and help out. You come be as involved as you want to be. Sit back as much as you want to. All right, let's take this off the lathe and get it so you can see it. Oh me, oh my. I'm gonna move this back so I don't actually hit it. I'm gonna pick my sander up off the floor. Nope, I'll tighten it. There we go, now we're set, ready to go for the next piece. There we go. That is one mimosa bowl. Let me, I was going to see what is the size since I totally forgot. That is 12 inches in diameter and it sits, okay, the tenon is still on there. It sits roughly two and three quarter at three inches tall, 12 by three. That is one beautiful, beautiful piece of wood. Inside, the outside, I still have the, the foot and the tenon to take care of, uh, but there you have it, 12 by three mimosa. I did see recently where somebody said, is mimosa any good? Uh, I'm gonna say yes, but wear your dust mask. Wear your dust mask, that stuff, uh, uh, as soon as I touched tool to it, I began to cough. Um, now that the dust is gone, I'm not turning it, I'm not cutting it or sanding it, I'm not coughing or sneezing at all. So uh, I do see where I need to put a little more wax on here. Uh, I'm not going to put you through it. I've already put you through three or four coats. Um, but it looks wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Mark Soleil, thank you so much for the opportunity to... Uh, finish turn one of your pieces I've got another one to go <coughs> uh, Elizabeth Ross um, I hope this 
uh, meets your satisfaction and the satisfaction of your sister. Um, it, to me, it's it's beautiful. If your sister doesn't like it, send it back to me, and uh, uh, I'll I'll give you the the cost of you know what you're going to sell it for. Um, but I I tell you, it's uh, as far as I'm concerned, that is gorgeous. That's just a beautiful piece of wood. Uh, Mark did a fantastic job getting it started. Had a good shape, and I just it's the same shape it was in. I just it's thinner than what it was is all. So thank you for being with me. Uh, it's been fun having you with me. Uh, hopefully uh, this is Friday afternoon. Hopefully Saturday afternoon uh, I can have this posted so that you can see this. Uh, and I should have already had my 500 subscriber um, giveaway drawing at that point as well. So thank you again. Thank you for being with me. This is Doug at Woodspun Round. Until we get to meet again, hope you're able to spin them around.